I would like to talk about a favorite topic of mine for today, purgatory. I have always loved the teaching of purgatory. In short, purgatory is, it's, it's somewhere between heaven and hell. However, it is not a place for kind of okay people who aren't really sinners or saints. It's not a third choice. It's not heaven or hell or purgatory. That would be inaccurate. Rather, purgatory is a place for people who are saved, who are bound for heaven, but they're just not quite ready yet. The devil still has a hold on their soul somehow. Sin is still a part of them. So you could think of purgatory as sort of a, uh, an extension of heaven. If heaven is a building, then purgatory is the courtyard. So if you do end up in purgatory, I will see you there. I, have, I made my reservation a long time ago. Although I am hoping for a late check-in. Now, if you're wondering why purgatory is the topic for today, it's because of what we heard Jesus saying in the gospel. He was warning us that the consequences of sin await all of us, not just the truly wicked. It's not only the evil who need to fear divine justice. Because all of us will have to answer for our sins whether they're big or small. So Jesus had to, he had to correct his contemporaries who were making a false conclusion that we still hear today. I'm not so bad. Surely there are worse people out there for, than me for God to worry about. I'm a good person by comparison. I'm not really the problem. We've heard that. And we have heard the conservative Christian response to that. Well, God doesn't grade on a curve. Now, mind you, all of those statements are true. All of those statements are true. It is true. All of us are good people. Certainly compared to the worst humanity has to offer. That is very likely true. There is a very big difference between someone who uses bad language and someone that sells heroin to children. Those are definitely different sins, different people, no question about that. And it's also true that God doesn't grade on a curve. But all of that kind of misses the point when it comes to caring about our sins. We should care about our sins, big or small, but for a far simpler reason than any of that. And purgatory is the answer you reach when you really sit down and do the math. So here is the reason we believe in purgatory in three easy steps, all of which are backed up by scripture. Step one, all of us are sinners. Every single one of us is a sinner that is all over the place in the Bible. That's in the letters of, to, that's the letters of John. It's very clear in the letter of James. And Jesus talks about this with some frequency. Remember, he who is sinless should throw the first stone. Nobody threw a stone. Jesus knew that. He knew what he was doing in that story. So all of us are sinners. Fine. Step two. Nothing sinful can enter into heaven. Now, that's basic common sense with what heaven is. You shouldn't need to back that up with scripture. But if you need to read that in black and white, you can find that in the book of Revelation, chapter 27. Nothing sinful can enter into heaven. And finally, step three, there is an infinite gulf between the holiness of God and the sinful nature of us. You can read about that in the first letter of John, chapter one. So what all that means is that heaven is totally pure. Sin cannot exist there. That is impossible. That is a contradiction. And not only are we sinners, but we're not even close. 
We're not even close. It's not like there are people out there who are 99% sin-free and they missed out on heaven because of 1% of sin. Like, no. None of us is remotely close to God's perfection and holiness. None of us can get to heaven on our own power. All of you know that. We get to heaven for one reason and one reason alone. We get to heaven because God loves us that much. So God can get us to heaven. Fine. What is impossible for us is possible for God. That's a pretty basic belief. Purgatory is basically how God makes that happen. It's a process, more than a place, it's a process where imperfect people are perfectly cleansed of their sins prior to their entry into heaven. Because if you think about it, if you really think about it, we have to be cleansed of literally all our sins. We have to let go of all of it if we're going to be in the presence of God the Father. Frankly, I find all of this very easy to believe in. When our time on this earth is over, God is not going to abandon us. He is not going to throw us away in the fires of hell, certainly not for something as petty as imperfection. But our journey home to heaven, where we truly belong, that journey must involve an accounting and resolution of all sins on our hearts, whether they're big or small. If you think you can get to heaven without any real work on your part, well, I am sorry, but that is arrogance. And Jesus calls out people making that exact assumption in the gospel. Little sins do not get a free pass into salvation. We have to deal with all of it. So again, we should care about our sins. Not because God doesn't grade on a curve or any of that. It's just the simple logic of purgatory. We are all sinners. Nothing sinful can enter heaven. And it's the mercy of God that makes all of this possible. So Jesus urges us to repent of our sins now, because there is no time like the present. The sins we repent of now are the sins we don't have to deal with later. And mark my words, we have to deal with all of our sins sooner or later. And if you think about it a little bit more, this is pretty much the same thing we talk about with Lent and Easter. We should want to work. We should want to labor for holiness in Lent that we may be most joyful on Easter Sunday. We should want to be ready for Easter. And in just the same way, we should want to be ready for heaven. And we do that by repenting of anything that takes us farther away from God. Because in the end, that is exactly what sin is. It is anything that breaks us apart from God and the goodness that comes from him and him alone. 